Hi, hello, it's me. I just had a, a face trim. We started a new book last night. It's only another Tiffany Aiken book, I Shall Wear Midnight. So Terry's chapters are a little bit longer than the previous books that we've been reading. So I didn't read a whole chapter last night. We stopped about halfway through at a sensible place. And we'll do the same tonight because we still won't finish chapter one tonight. Oh my goodness. Last night, Tiffany was at the fair, the scouring, and it was just kind of set in the scene of the fair, really, wasn't it? So uh, we'll pick it up from there. You ready? Here we go. Alone in the crowd, Tiffany sighed. It was hard when you wore the black pointy hat, because, like it or not, the witch was the pointy hat, and the pointy hat was the witch. It made people careful about you. They would be respectful, oh yeah, and often a little bit nervous, as if they expected you to look inside their heads. Which, as a matter of fact, you could probably do, using the good old witch's standbys of first sight and second thoughts. <laughs> Remember them from the first couple of books? Good. But these weren't really magic. Anyone could learn them if they had a lick of sense, but sometimes even a lick is hard to find. People are often so busy that they never. People are often so busy living that they never stop to wonder why. Witches did, and that meant them being needed. Oh yes, needed, needed practically all the time, but not in a very polite and definitely unspoken way. Not exactly wanted. This wasn't the mountains where people were very used to witches. People on the chalk could be friendly, but they weren't friends, not actual friends. The witch was different. The witch knew things that you did not. The witch was another kind of person. The witch was someone that perhaps you should not anger. The witch was not like other people. Tiffany Aching was the witch, and she had made herself the witch because they needed one. Everybody needs a witch but sometimes they just don't know it. And it was working. The storybook pictures of the drooling hag were being wiped away every time Tiffany helped a young mother with her first baby or, <coughs> or smoothed an old man's path to his grave. Nevertheless, old stories, old rumours and old picture books still seemed to have their own hold on the memory of the world. What made it more difficult was that there was no tradition of witches on the chalk, None would ever have settled there when Granny Aching had been alive. Granny Aching, as everybody knew, was a wise woman, and wise enough not to be a witch. Nothing ever happened on a chalk that Granny Aching disapproved of, at least not for more than about ten minutes. So Tiffany was a witch alone. And not only was there no longer any support from the mountain witches like Nanny Og, Granny Weatherwax and Miss Level, but the people of the chalk weren't very familiar with witches. Other witches would probably come and help if she asked, of course, but although they wouldn't say so, this might mean that you couldn't cope with responsibility, you weren't up to the task, weren't sure, or weren't good enough. Excuse me, miss. <laughs> There was a nervous giggle. Tiffany looked round and there were two little girls in their best new frocks and straw hats. They were looking at her eagerly, with perhaps just a hint of mischief in their eyes. She thought quickly and smiled at them. Oh yes, Becky Pardon and Nancy Upright, yes? What can I do for the two of you? Becky Pardon shyly produced a small bouquet from behind her back and held it out. Tiffany recognised it, of course. She had made them herself for the older girls when she was younger, simply because it was what you did. It was part of the scouring, a little bunch of wildflowers picked from the downland, tied in a bunch, and... And this was the important bit, the magic bit. Some of the grass pulled up as the fresh, fresh chalk was exposed. If you put this under your pillow tonight, you will dream of your bow said Becky Pardon, her face quite serious now. Tiffany took the slightly wilting bunch of flowers with care. Let me see, she said. We have here sweet mumbles, ladies' pillows, seven-leaf clover, very lucky, a sprig of old man's trousers, jack in the wall, oh, love lies bleeding, and she stared at the little white and red flowers. 
the girl said. You're right, miss. Forget me lots, said Tiffany, more sharply than she had intended. But the girls hadn't noticed, so she continued to say brightly, Quite unusual to see it here. It must be a garden escapee. And as I'm sure you both know, you have bound them all together with strips of candle rush, which once upon a time people used to make into rush lights. What a lovely surprise. Thank you both very much. I hope you have a lovely time at the fair. Becky raised her hand. Excuse me, miss. Was there something else, Becky? Becky went pink and had a cur had a hurried conversation with her friend. She turned back to Tiffany, looking slightly more pink, but nevertheless determined to see things through. You can't get into trouble for asking a question, can you, miss? I mean, for just asking a question. <sighs> it's going to be how can I be a witch when I'm grown up? Tiffany thought, because it generally was. The young girl saw her on a broomstick and thought that she would, and thought that was what being a witch was. Out loud, she said, Not from me, at least. Please, do ask your question. Becky Pardon looked down at her boots. Do you have any passionate parts, miss? <laughs> Another talent needful in a witch is the ability not to let your fate not to let your face show what you're thinking, and especially not allowing it, no matter what, to go as stiff as a board. <laughs> Tiffany managed to say, without a single wobble in her voice and no trace of an embarrassed smirk, that's a very interesting question, Becky. Can I ask you why you want to know? Wow, I've got that talent working with four and five-year-olds. You can't let it show. <laughs> The girl looked a lot happier now that the question was, as it were, out in the public domain. Well, miss, I asked my granny if I could be a witch when I was older, and she, sh she said I shouldn't want to because witches have no passionate parts, miss. Tiffany thought quickly in the face of the two solemn owlish stares. These are farm girls, she thought, so they have certainly seen a cat have kittens and a dog have puppies. They'd have seen the birth of lambs and probably a cow have a calf, which is always a noisy affair that you can hardly miss. They know what they are asking me about. At this point, Nancy chimed in with, Only, if that is so, miss, we would quite like to have them their flowers back, now we've shown them to you, because perhaps it might be a bit of a waste, meaning no offence. She stepped back quickly. Tiffany was so sort of surprised at her own laughter. It had been a long time since she'd laughed. Heads turned to see what the joke was, and she managed to grab both of the girls before they fled, and she spun them around. Well done, the pair of ye, she said. I like to see some sensible thinking every now and again. Never hesitate to ask a question. And the answer to your question is that witches are the same as everybody else when it comes to passionate parts, but often they are so busy rushing around that they have never have the time to think about them. The girls looked relieved that their work had not been entirely in vain, and Tiffany was ready for the next question, which came from Becky again. So, do you have a bow, miss? Not right at the moment, Tiffany said briskly, clamping down on her expression, lest it give anything away. She held up the little bouquet. But who knows, if you've made this properly, then I'll get another one. And in that case, you will be better witches than me, that is for certain. They both beamed at this dreadful piece of outright flannel, and it stopped the questions. And now, said Tiffany, the cheese rolling will be starting any minute. I'm sure you don't want to miss that. No, miss, they said in unison. Just before they left, full of relief and self-importance, Becky patted Tiffany on her hand. Bows can be very difficult, miss, she said with the assurance of, to Tiffany's certain knowledge, eight years in the world. Thank you, said Tiffany. I shall definitely bear that in mind. When it came to the entertainment offered at the fair, such as people making faces through a horse collar or fighting with pillows on a greasy pole or even bobbing for frogs, well, Tiffany could take them or leave them alone, and in fact much preferred to leave them alone. But she always liked to see a good old cheese roll. That is to see, say, a good cheese roll all the way down the slope of a hill, although not across the giant because no one would want to eat that cheese afterwards. 
They were hard cheeses, sometimes specially made for the cheese rolling circuit, and the winning maker of the cheese that reached the bottom unscathed won a belt with a silver buckle and the admiration of all. Tiffany was an expert cheesemaker, but she'd never entered. Witches couldn't enter that sort of competition because if you won, and she knew she had made a cheese or two that could win, everyone would say that was unfair because you were a witch. Well, that's what they would think, but very few would say it. And if you didn't win, people would say, what kind of witch can't make a cheese that can beat by simple cheeses made by simple fluke like us? There was a gentle movement of the crowd to the start of the cheese rolling. Although the frog bobbin still had a big crowd, it would be a very humorous and reliable source of entertainment, especially to those people who weren't actually bobbing. Regrettably, the man who put weasels down his trousers, and apparently had a personal best of nine weasels, hadn't been there this year, and people were wondering if he'd lost his touch. But sooner or later, everyone would drift over to the start line for the cheese rolling. It was a tradition. The slope here was very steep indeed, and there was always a certain amount of boisterous rivalry between the cheese owners, which led to pushing and shoving and kicking and bruises. Occasionally, he got a broken arm or leg. All was going as normal as the waiting men lined up their cheeses until Tiffany saw, and seemed to be the only one to see, a dangerous cheese roll up all by itself. It was black under the dust and there was a piece of grubby blue and white cloth tied to it. Oh my, she said, Horace. And where you are, trouble cannot be far behind. She spun around, carefully searching for signs of what should not be there. Now, you all just listen to me, she said under her breath. I know at least one of you must be somewhere near. This isn't for you. This is just about people. Do you all understand? But it was too late. The master of the revels in his big floppy hat with lace around the brim blew his whistle, and the cheese rolling, as he put it, commenced, which is a far grander word than started. And a man with lace around his hat was never going to use a short word where a long word would do. Tiffany hardly dared to look. The runners didn't so much as run as roll and skid behind their cheeses, but she could hear the cries that went up when the black cheese not only shot into the lead, but occasionally turned round and went back uphill again in order to bang into one of the ordinary innocent cheeses. She could just hear a faint grumbling noise coming from it as if it almost shot to the top of the hill. Cheese runners shouted at it, tried to grab at it and flailed at it with sticks. But the piratical cheese scythed onwards, reaching the bottom again just ahead of the terrible carnage of men and cheeses as they piled up, then rolled gently back up to the top and sat there demurely while still gently vibrating. At the bottom of the slope, fights were breaking out among the cheese jockeys who were still capable of punching somebody, and since everyone was now watching that, Tiffany took the opportunity to snatch up Horace and shove him into her bag. After all, he was hers. Well, that was to say she had made him, although something odd must have got into the mix since Horace was only cheese in the world that would eat mice and, if he didn't nail him down, other cheeses as well. No wonder he got on so well with the Mac Mac Feagles, who had made him an honorary member of the clan. He was their kind of cheese. Surreptitiously, hoping that no one would notice, Tiffany held the bag up to her mouth and said, Is this any way to behave? Aren't you ashamed? The bag wobbled a little bit, but she knew that the word shame was not in Horace's vocabulary, and neither was anything else. She lowered the bag and moved a little way, a little way away from the crowd and said, I know you're here, Rob, anybody. <laughs> we'll leave it there for tonight. <laughs> oh, I do love those feagles. They're great, aren't they? Great little things. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to show you out the window. Look, I've got summer shirt on, summer haircut, summer trim. <laughs> it must be a sunny bank holiday weekend. I don't know whether... Mm, well, you can see. I don't know whether you can spot many things heading that way, though. Oh, the cars have all stopped now. Hang on. Here comes one. Ready? Whee! <laughs> <laughs> the whole time I was reading the story, there was loads of cars going past. Oh, there goes a bus. But, um, yeah, it's a lovely day outside. Can you see the 
if I aim you that way, can you see the blue skies? Look at that. Ooh, lovely. Oh, there's a car. There you go. Looking lovely out there today in my little part of the UK. What's it like where you are? Someone wrote on here the other day that it's always 35 degrees where they live. Oh my goodness. Maybe a bit too hot for my liking. I'm not quite used to that. Mm -mm. It's about maybe 17 or 18 degrees here today and I'm like, yep, summer. We're here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Less waffle.